Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and I'm doing a Let's Play of Mon Moose Quest Paradox RPG, Catalyst Chapter. Unlike my walkthrough and speedrun previously posted, I'm going to be going through much slower this time and in several parts, showing not only the main quest but also all the side quests of which I'm aware. Also explaining the plot somewhat and providing commentary and some direction on the play on the play of the game. We start with a vision. Oh, there's the button I want. That's the goddess Elias. While she does provide us with this vision, it doesn't actually have much in the way of contents. Here we have Luca's diary. We get to enter an entry before we leave, and this is just a book he happens to have. A picture book of the hero Heinrich. Here in the commentary we have lots of options. What we're going to do is set our dash speed to faster, and turn our cut-ins off and our battle speed to fastest. Now, Luca would today be heading out to get a blessing, but things are happening, and he's not going to do that. But the first thing you notice is a lot of wardrobes and a lot of drawers have items in them, which you can get. Also, some pots. And then, of course, treasure chests. You can look on shelves and things, but to this point, I've yet to remember any shelf or either bookshelves or medicine shelves or other things that have any kind of item in them. Just wardrobes, drawers, pots, and chests. So let's see what the fuss is all about. Hansel Woodcutter has been kidnapped by a slime, so we're off to f find him. You don't get a lot of options here, because if you wander off the path before going to the first dungeon, it'll just say, get on with it. This first slime will give you three medicines. I'm not going to be big on fights here. Because until I have my party, I'm not going to get what I want. I'm going to grab the gold out of that chest though. As far as collecting treasure goes, I'm just going to do side quests and sometimes collect gold if I think it's necessary. A first lesson, you can get a boomerang out of this chest here. And this slime will give you a fish. Now why we would want these things? Over here is a slime synthesis, where you can synthesize items such as the fish boomerang, which you can get with a boomerang and a fish. We're not actually going to use it, however. That's the kind of pattern you have for synthesis. A couple items and you get something better. Now, something crashed down to earth over here, so let's take a look. Top of the stairs. A cutscene. And I am now two steps forward. Anyway, this is the goddess Elias. She's rather surprised to be as small as she is. When Luca observes how small she is, she decides to immediately punish him with lightning of punishment. It's played for laughs, but she is literally trying to kill him. If she hadn't been depowered, he would have been reduced to scattered ashes. I received a comment on my previous walkthroughs that I kind of heap shit on Elias. But let's not forget, she considered being called small to be disrespectful to her and literally tried to kill Luca immediately upon hearing it. 
So here we are at the summit. Hansel Woodcutter has been kidnapped by this bunny slime. She's not really a bunny, however. She was as she was. Now when we do fight, we usually use this second command here. Everybody attacks. Uh, notice this stream. At the end of each turn, the enemies may talk to you on various things. If your life bar pops up in the upper right hand corner, you want to pick the top option because the bottom option will kill you. Now we beat the bunny slime and Hans is free. Oh, one thing I want to point out. When I get a chance, I will show you where these small metals are. They're useful for purchases at a certain MVC halfway across this continent. And now we have Alice. She's looking for a rabbit. And that's all she gives us. So we tell her there's one at the summit. It is, however, unfortunately, the wrong rabbit. You see, a rabbit turned her into this uh, depowered version of herself. So she's looking for the rabbit to get her revenge. This is something that comes up a few times. You got the wrong rabbit. It's kind of odd how often that happens, actually. Well, Alice realizes that she's got the wrong one and runs off. Now that we've beaten the first boss, there aren't any more encounters on this screen. So we get to run back to town without any problems. We're not going to take a look, a really close look around town yet because we have a ceremony to attend. This is Sonia, Luca's childhood friend. Oops, I could have talked to you about those. The third one's funny, where you, Luca pretends like he doesn't remember who Sonia is. But anyway, they all are result in the same thing, her screeching at you and telling you to come. So we come into the temple and have our ceremony. This is a blessing from the goddess ceremony, although the goddess has not been participating in the last 30 years. Except she does provide the three of us with a vision this time. She provides a little bit more than the vision at the beginning of the game, but not really much. Asks us to save the world before fading out. She hasn't got any more power than that. So that's that. Now something's going on at Luca's house. So let's run back there. I call that running, but you're out. But he's actually walking because we don't have control on the way out. Now, do you remember those two from the mountain? These are the same girls, and they are fighting in Luca's house. They've heard about Luca going on a journey, and they both want to co-opt his journey for their own ends. Specifically, to find who the hell depowered them and get their powers back. But the two of them hate each other. So if you pick one, you can't pick the other, and one of them will accompany you on your journey. Of course, you can't actually leave. You have to pick somebody before you go. I've always done it with Alice, and this will be my first full playthrough with Elias, so let's pick the goddess. This provides most of the background that you'll be needing, but the thing is you're going on a journey and you're doing stuff. Elis has this uh, self-aggrandizing thing about her. She thinks she should be 
addressed more respectfully in spite of the fact that she's, you know, tiny. And she complains about it. Oh, here she demands that Luca look up to her, in spite of the fact that she is literally shorter. But, that's logic for you. <clears throat> now we've got the village chief to go visit and someone else to capture. If you want to leave the village at this point, you just come down here and say, Nah, we don't care about that, but we're actually going to stay and do this. The village chief can provide a lot of the setting if you want to listen to it. Talking about Luca's father, Razaro, one of Luca's father's friends, Sonia, and other stuff. This 30 years ago event would be nice to listen to. I really, I ought to listen to it myself because I don't really remember what exactly happened. But, we're not going to dig too deep into plot. I'm going to keep it to the basics. Once we come out after receiving the key from the mayor, Sonia here decides to join our party. Something she's disappointed about is to find that the two of them are going to have this companion. <laughs> Elas is just so ill-tempered. Now you might have seen that guy trying to chase us down. What does he do? He stops time and runs up to us in order to say hi. He claims he's a passerby. Now I do heap shit on Elias, but she is able to immediately grasp that he manipulated space-time in order to talk to Luca. Anyway, all he's here to do is say hi and wish him luck on his journey. And express surprise at the fact that people can actually use magic around here. This is one of the things that will tip you off to the fact that he is not from around here. In fact, he's probably from another reality entirely. <clears throat> here, he accuses Sonia of not existing, which Sonia finds quite surprising. And this is our first foreshadowing of, well, I'm not really at liberty to say. So that cuts me out of the way. Oh, this is Luca's mother's grave. He talks to in the grave as if he's talking to his mother, which is kind of normal. Sonia pays her respects, and Elias, of all people, knows her name. But then, we shouldn't be surprised. Elias, according to our own account, knows the name of every human on the planet. So over here, once we have Sonia, we can come and rescue this slime out of the pit of whatever that is. And she will join our party, feeling out our regular four members. And we get to start like this. After this, we're going to leave town, but immediately come back, because out of town there is a cutscene. This is where Elias reveals that she stole something from Alice when they were fighting in Lucas' house. This, the Pocket Mao Castle. This is an explanation of the party system. We can have four people in our party at any time, and four backup characters, which won't, you won't see on the screen, but you can sw swap them out if you feel like it. And you can come here and fiddle with the party members. But it's an empty castle right now, so we don't have much use for it. Now the reason we left town to do that before coming back in is after getting the Mao castle, we can do this scene. Where the guard who was out here earlier 
He's standing there in the pit. Stranded as well. And this is where one of our first quests starts off. Let's see, do we get an item? Yes, we get that key. The key we got from the mayor fits in this lock. Free money. And here we have an imp. Elias, of course, tells us to kill him as... To kill it as soon as she sees it. This is an important item to get. This is the hard job list. It allows you to learn jobs faster. You know, I forget what this was. Eye medicine. Now, plot points. This is someone you could speak with the mayor about. Razaro. Luca's father's friend. Adventuring party companion, actual. He is largely the man who raised Sonia, uh, such as it is. He's pretty irresponsible and didn't do a very... Well, I can't say he did a bad job because Sonia turned out alright. But one really wonders what's up with that. And you can poke around in here, and Sonia will complain about all these... All the stuff that's around, the grass growing in it, the rocks laying around, and of course all of the booze. Rosado can tell you his version of various events that have happened around here as well. Oh, here's a defining moment for Elias. Here we got another imp off in a garden, just laying there. The gardener will ask us to try and do something about her because anytime she throws her out, she just comes back and eats strawberries on occasion. Elias' idea is to cut her up into bits, sow her into the garden, and then eat the strawberries that grow there. Let's see. Yeah, a maiden's room. This is Sonia's house. A pretty normal house. Except she's got a club in her bed. A club over here in a pot. And a club in the drawers. In case you didn't know, she's a club user. And Irias is kind of scared of teddy bears. It's a long story. I'll probably tell you later on. Here is someone you can talk to. If you pick this first one, you'll be able to meet her in a tent outside and do some... Well, not really interesting things, actually. Uh, nothing here. Now, second quest in this town. This merchant has a friend who has gone out for herbs and stuff and has not come back. So pick the first option and we can go rescue him. And that's about it for the important stuff in town. But before we take off, we're going to switch some jobs around. You start with a fairly balanced party for normal difficulty, but we're on very easy difficulty, so we can switch three players to player, which has a useful ability we'll be using a lot. Whoops. In addition to the two side quests, we want to recruit a few members into our party. Once you have the Mao castle, once you have the Mao castle, these random encounters will occasionally result in monster girls asking to join your party.
there are going to be five in this first chapter that we can collect. One that we really need to, but five we can. I already have a slime girl, so I don't need to fight them. Now here we have regular cave. This is a girl that we definitely need to recruit. Now the key we got from the guard will open this chest. Providing us with the heroic spirit proof. Now here we go. This imp wants to join our party. Alright. Nice to have you. Most of these chests are just regular chest stuff. New weapons. New weapons, occasionally gold. Consumables. Okay, w w there are more characters I would like to recruit, but I'm getting tired of these random encounters, so I'm going to use this in Vahility here. You get this at player level 2, and it halves the encounters that you run into. If you have the encounters enough times, eventually you'll get to the point where no encounters happen. Probably due to rounding errors. So at this point, we don't need to worry about encounters no matter how much we run around. So this is our first quest turn in. Our reward for this is the hero proof, and it allows us to become a guard. He runs off into the castle. Normally I don't like to do this, but I'm going to do it just because he's there, and I opt to tell you people because you'll never figure it out on your own. This is where he goes. Whoops. You don't need to listen to him talk, but his second option here lets him join your party if you want him. I'm probably going to kick him out as soon as I get a chance. So that's him. I don't see why anyone would want to have guys in their party in a game like this. With that taken care of, let's do that other quest. This is the Lost Merchant. This is another desert themed dungeon where you'll have treasure chests and such. And here's the merchant. He heard a mandragora scream and now he's stuck. Paralyzed, specifically. But we got these herbs to cure paralyzation. So we give him one and he runs off. Before we run off after him. This tree is important later. Probably in my next video, actually. Oh. I guess the encounter rate around here is high enough that you can... ...run into monsters even with three players. Three and count halves, rather. So now that we've rescued that merchant, you will find him here. And this quest giver will offer you this choice of rewards. Except it's not really a choice. No matter which one you pick, he'll give you all three. One, two, three. This one lets you become a merchant in the job change, which is useful. And that about wraps up our first chapter. I've got a bit of time left, so I'm going to take off encounter half and try and kill a few of these 
You know what, actually I'm going to switch all my players out. Now that we've gotten player to level 2, we'll keep the encounter half even if we change our jobs. When you change your job, however, your abilities are all cancelled out, so you have to equip them again. This is because you can see up there, each of these have different numbers. Each job will give you a different amount of points in each of those categories. And it doesn't really know which ones to disequip if you go from a high point number to a low point number, so it just disequips all of them. Since I want to run into encounters out here, I'm going to switch it to this encounter half to encounter double. See, I got a whole four steps there. Five steps that time. Ah, yes. Usa will join our party now, which is good because she, we're going to want her later. I also want this character to join our party. Oh, gross. Another one you want to pick the first one because the second option kills you. Don't need you. Already have you. Well, these other characters aren't being cooperative, so we're just going to save here, and I'll see you next time.